In this video, I'll be walking you through the process of creating a multi-pass render inside of ZBrush 4. We'll be creating individual passes, and then we'll be compiling those back together in a compositing program such as Adobe After Effects. In the print article, I showed you how to create a multi-pass render using a still image and Photoshop. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a multi-pass render for an animation using Adobe After Effects. Now, you can see that I've already got the animation set up on the timeline. If I scrub the time slider, you can see that we have a simple zoom in followed by a spin around to the back side of the object. Now, I won't actually be rendering out each of these passes because I've already gone ahead and done that in preparation for the video. What I will be doing is showing you how to create the passes and then instructing you when it's time to actually save. Let's go ahead and begin creating the various passes. The first pass that we'll create is the raw color pass. To do this, we'll go ahead and choose the flat color material from the material palette. And then I could go in, choose the material button from the shelf, go up to the color menu and choose fill object. However, that would be tedious and time consuming. So I'm going to use the Subtool Master plugin. Again, if you don't have the Subtool Master plugin, you can download this from pixelogic.com. I'll choose the fill option and then I'll simply choose the Material option and then click OK. When the plugin is finished, you'll notice that it has filled all subtools with the flat color material. Now what this has done is it's eliminated all diffuse shading, leaving us just the pure RGB colors as we would see on a normal texture map. Now to render out this pass, we'd want to make sure that we go to the Render menu and make sure Shadows and Ambient Occlusion are both turned off. Then we would do a Best Preview Render and then finally, holding down the control key and the shift key, we would click below the timeline. This would record out the animation and when finished, allow us to save it as a quick time movie. The second pass that we'll create is the shadow pass. I'll go ahead and make sure that I'm using a white main color and the flat material color. I'll go back into the plugins and choose Subtool Master and fill again. This time I'll fill with the color and material and click OK. When we're finished, we'll have a pure white object that has no diffuse shading. Now this is perfect because we can still cast shadows onto this object. We'll go into the render menu and enable shadows. Now we'll go ahead and do a best preview render. When the render is finished, you'll see the shadows on that object. Now again, we would hold down the control key and the shift key and click below the timeline to record out that movie. When it's finished, save it as a quick time. The next pass to create is the Ambient Occlusion Pass. Again, from the Render menu, turn off Shadows, and now turn on A Occlusion for Ambient Occlusion. Do another BPR Render, and when finished, hold down the Control key and the Shift key, and click below your timeline to record your animation. When it's finished, save it as a QuickTime movie file. The next pass that we're going to create is our Mask Pass. We'll go ahead and go to the Render menu, turn off Ambient Occlusion, and then I'll just refresh by clicking and dragging in the canvas. Now, what you'll see here is we have a pure black background. To make sure you have a pure black background, go to the document menu and simply using the main color set to black, choose the back color. Then drag your range all the way to zero. With our object pure white and our background pure black, we have now a perfect mat that we can use inside of a compositing program to isolate our object from its background. Go ahead and do a BPR render, and then holding down the control key and the shift key, click below the timeline. When the render is finished, save your animation as a QuickTime movie to your hard drive. Now the next pass that we're gonna create is our diffuse pass. We'll go into the materials and choose the basic material. Again, we'll go into the plugins, choose Subtool Master, and just to make sure everything is filled, we'll choose color and material and click OK. Now what we have here is a basic diffuse pass. Currently the light shading that we have is coming from the principal key light in the scene. Let's go ahead and set up our lighting. We'll open up the light menu and dock it to the tray. Now you can see that we have one light active. This light is our key light and it has shadows already turned on. We'll go ahead and adjust the light to the upper left corner 
and I'll drag the ambient light all the way down. Now I'm going to set up a three point light setup, which typically involves a key light, a fill light, and a rim light. I'll start with the second light. This will be my rim light, and I'll turn off the first light so we can see the effect of this light by itself. I'll drag the placement dot up to the upper top center of the sphere, and then you'll notice that the light is coming from the front or projecting down onto the front of the object. I don't want this projecting from the back. I'll simply click the orange dot on the light preview sphere and that'll send that light to the back. Now traditionally I like my rim light to be above 1.0 in intensity so I'm going to go ahead and drag this up to about 1.1 1 .1 or 1.2. That looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and turn this light off and then I'll come down to this lower light. Now again you'll notice that this light directly below is set up as a fill light. And of course we could drag this to the upper right and use that as an automatic fill, but I'm going to show you how to create a manual fill. We'll turn that off and click the light directly below it. Again, we'll position it opposite the key light, and then we'll go ahead and drop its intensity down quite a bit. Now we'll check our lighting. And that looks pretty good. Now we'll do a BPR render, first making sure that we don't have any shadows or ambient occlusion turned on. Once that render is complete, we'll hold down the control key and the shift key and then click below the timeline to record out the animation. When the animation is finished, save it as a QuickTime movie. Now, the last thing we're going to do is save out lighting passes. This will allow us to adjust the lights interactively in real time after the fact. To do this, we'll go ahead and use a different material. So from the material palette, we'll choose the basic material 2. Then from the plugin menu, we'll choose Subtool Master, Fill, Color, and Material. One of the nice things about the basic material 2 is that it already has a good spec embedded in the material, but there are some modifications that we need to make. So We'll open up the material palette and dock it to the tray. And then we'll open up the modifier submenu. Now there's a few modifications that we want to make. Ultimately what we're looking for is a very dark object with just the highlights from the light showing on it. To achieve this we'll go ahead and drop the ambient all the way down. And then we'll take our diffuse all the way down to zero as well. You can see now that we have a very dark object with some of that specular hit to it. I'll go up to my lights, and then I'm going to simply turn off these so I have just the key. Back to the materials, I'm going to increase the specular all the way to 100%. Now you'll see this gives us a very, very tight highlight. There's nothing wrong with this, and this is a very subjective issue, so don't take this as if somehow there's a right way to setting up your light passes. It's whatever you feel looks right to you. In this case, however, this looks like I'm receiving very dark areas in some of my object, and I'd like to see just a little more light shining into that. To get this, I'll go ahead and adjust the specular curve, and then simply drag this dot at the center up a little bit, allowing a little more light over the surface of the object. Great. Now, at this point, we'll go into the Render menu, making sure that Shadows and Ambient Occlusion are turned off. We'll do a Best Preview Render, and then, holding down the Control key and the Shift key, click below the timeline to record your animation. When it's finished, go ahead and export the animation as a QuickTime movie. We'll repeat this process for each of the lights, from the key light to the rim light, and then ultimately the fill light. When you're finished, you should have a series of renders. Now it's time to begin compiling those renders together in a compositing program. I'm going to use Adobe After Effects, but you can use just about any compositing program or high-end video editor that's out there. The main thing that we're looking for is the ability to use blending modes on the layers. Okay, I'm here in After Effects, and I'm showing you the finished results of the multi-layer composite.
I'm going to show you how to take each of the individual passes that we created inside of ZBrush and then layer them together to create this type of effect. I'm going to begin with a new project and then I'll create a new composition. I'll set that up and I'm going to match the frame rate that I had inside of ZBrush which is 24 frames per second. I'll go ahead and fit this into my workspace and now it's time to import the footage. Now here are the multi-pass renders that we've saved out of ZBrush. I'm going to bring in my diffuse pass as well as the raw color pass. I'll bring in the key light, the fill light, and the rim light as well as the shadow and the ambient occlusion. You'll see that there are a few additional files in here. We'll talk about those in just a little bit. For right now, I could bring in the mask, but I'll leave that off as well. Now, I'll bring each of these in and drag them into the comp. The first thing that we need to do is begin to order the layers. We always want to start with our diffuse layer down at the bottom, so I'll click and drag it to the bottom. The raw color should be close to the top, so we'll move that up as well. Then we'll take our key light and our rim light and our fill light and move them above the diffuse. The shadow and the ambient occlusion will go above those. Now let's go ahead and turn everything off except for the diffuse and you can see it here. I'll go ahead and make the visible area a little bit larger so it's easier to see. Now you can see that we have our diffuse pass here. We're going to overlay the color on top of this. So I'll go to the raw color layer, I'll turn it on, and then I'll set its blending mode from normal to overlay. Now when this happens, you'll see that the image appears washed out. That's not a problem, it's easy to correct. We'll go into the diffuse layer, and then under effect we'll choose layer effect, color correction, and then we'll choose levels. The levels allow us to control the input, the output of light and dark colors as well as doing gamma correction and brightness corrections. In this case what we're going to do is take the white output point, since there's too much white in our image, and simply drag it to the left. Now from practice I already know that when this reaches roughly 128 or halfway through the spectrum, it'll look just about right. That's great. Now we've got our diffuse pass and the color over the top of it, but you'll notice that we don't have any specular hit to this. So now it's time to activate our lights. We'll go ahead and activate all of the lights, and then we'll set each of their blending modes to screen. Now we might see a little bit of artifacting in here, that's fine. We'll go ahead and scrub the timeline, and that should update and go away. I'll also go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer so we can get a good feel. Now you can see that once we've activated all of the lighting passes it's really too much light. That's fine. The beauty of the multi-pass approach is that it allows us to adjust our lighting in real time and dial in more or less to suit our needs. The easiest way to adjust them is through the layer opacity. So in After Effects I'll tap the T keyboard shortcut for transparency. That'll open up the opacity for each one. I'll deselect, then simply select the key light, and I'm simply going to drag its opacity down until I'm happy with the results. I'll do the same thing for the rim light, and then also for the fill light. Now it's important to note that there's no right or wrong setting here. This is purely an aesthetic issue. If you like it, that's great. If you don't, that's fine too. Adjust it to your taste. We'll go ahead and call that good. Now we'll go ahead and enable the shadow layers. So I'll go ahead and close or toggle down the light layers. I'll open up shadow and ambient occlusion 
I'll make them visible and then set their blending mode to multiply. You can see that's added the shadows back in and if I go ahead and turn off the layer visibility you can see what a noticeable effect that's had. In some cases you might want to then go back in and readjust your lighting but in this case I'm pretty happy. Now the overall image does look a little bit dark so I'm going to go into After Effects and do another level adjustment for the entire thing. I'll go click on the raw color layer and then above that I'll create a new layer and I'll make it an adjustment layer. To the adjustment layer I'll add the effect, color correction, levels, and in this particular case I'll go ahead and increase the white point to the beginning of the histogram curve just so we get a little more control over that. Great. Now I'll go ahead and scrub through the timeline. And you can see here's the effect of our multipass system. Now I'd like to go ahead and increase the lighting and get just a little more specular hit on that key light. So again, I'll open up the T for transparency and dial in just a little bit more. and that looks pretty good to me. Now one of the things you might notice is that the armor looks a little bit dull. All of the metal bits in here have sort of lost their luster. That's because we rendered out a diffuse pass and then simply overlaid the color pass. We didn't really account however for the material properties so in this case to regain the metal what I've done is I've rendered out a separate pass for just the metal bits. I'm going to go ahead and import those files now so you can see exactly what they look like. In this case I've called it armor and armor mask. I'll go ahead and import those and place them onto the composition. And then let's take a look at what we've got. This is just the raw armor and if we zoom in you can see that what we're looking at are just the armor bits and the metal bits using the materials that we set up inside of ZBrush. Now the way that I achieved this was to simply go to everything except for the metal which would be the axe head, the armor, and the earrings. I went to every single surface except for those and set it to a black color with a flat material then I went ahead and rendered. Once that was finished I went to each of these metal bits and filled them with a white color and a flat material and that gave me my armor mask. Now with those two in play I can now take the armor layer and using the track mat choose the luma mat for the armor mask directly above it. That allows us to composite in the material over the top of our render. Now what you might notice is that we're not receiving any of the lighting information on this. That's because in the hierarchy of the stack, these are falling above the shadows and the lights. I'll go ahead, shift select both layers, and then drag them just above the diffuse layer. Now you can see that we've got the material, but we're also showing the lighting and shading passes on them as well, which looks much better. Now using the approach that we did with the armor we can actually isolate any tool or even a portion of a tool and render that out and have control over it in comp. This gives us a tremendous amount of control over the final look of our image. So there you have it. This is multipass rendering in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please see the other videos in this series for how you can use ZBrush 4 to enhance your demo reel.